In this video, we're taking a look at a sample data table for the acid-base titration experiment that we did. There's two parts in this video we're going to look at. In the first part, we're going to standardize sodium hydroxide like we did in our lab. You remember that to standardize a solution means to determine its concentration exactly. To do that, we're using the, an acid called potassium hydrogen phthalate, KHP, and we know that its molar mass is 204.2 grams per mole. And we're, we took, in the first trial, somebody used 1.015 grams of the KHB, and they looks like they filled their burette with sodium hydroxide. They recorded the initial level, 0.37 milliliters, and a final level, 22.75 milliliters. If you think you know what you're doing, pause the video and try to fill in the, the results for trial number one. All right, let's jump in and do the first one together. So we want to find the moles of the KHP that were used. We know the mass, so there was 1.015 grams, and we know the molar mass. So you could either use a unit multiplier, or you could use our little formula that moles equals mass divided by molar mass. And that little simple formula. So now I'm grabbing a calculator. We've got 1.015 grams divided by 204.2. So we get, now watch your significant digits. In this experiment, I guess we would have four digits in the mass and four digits in the molar mass. So we're going to keep four digits in the number of moles, 0 0.004971. So the moles would be 0 0.004971 moles. Now you could immediately go and find the other moles here, trial 2 and trial 3, or we can finish trial 1. Let's, let's finish trial 1 and then you can go on to do the other trials. Now, how many moles of NaOH were used? To figure out how many moles of the base after having found the moles of acid, we need to think about the balanced equation. Now, we could write it out. Maybe I can squeeze it in um, near the top here. The acid was KHP, and we know that that's a monoprotic acid, so we can think HA is its formula, a generic formula and it's reacting with the base sodium hydroxide. So right away, looking at that acid, we see it was monoprotic, one hydrogen, and the base has one hydroxide. So they're going to re react, I can tell right away, in a one-to-one -one ratio because the H's and the OH's are already equal. If they weren't equal, we would balance the, left, the acid and the base first. But here, one H and one OH is going to make water. Okay, if the if the acid were diprotic, H2A, then I'd put a 2 in front of the NaOH so that we'd have two OHs to go with the two H's. That would make not one water, but it would make two waters instead. Now we're also going to get a salt. The salt would be sodium, Na, bonded to A minus, the conjugate base of our acid. So there's the balanced equation. The products don't really matter. It's this ratio one to one that matters. So because it's a one to one ratio, the moles of the acid and the base are going to be the same, 0 0.004971. Now what volume of base was used in milliliters? Well, looking up at the top there, we had 0.37 milliliters initially, 22.75 the end, so if we subtract those, we get 22.38 milliliters was used. 22.38 milliliters. Now, to go from milliliters to liters, we want the volume in liters, we know we just divide by 1,000, or set up a unit multiplier to get rid of the milliliters and replace it with liters. There's a thousand milliliters in one liter. So when you divide that by a thousand, you get 0 0.02238.
okay? Now don't lose digits. Some of you in your labs were rounding off that to something like 0 0.022. Keep the digits. So now finally we want the concentration of the NaOH. Now the units suggest what to do. Take your moles and divide by your liters. But if you need to, remember the little formula. C, concentration, is moles divided by volume, where the volume is in liters. So if we take our moles, 0 0.004971, and divide by that volume, 0 0.02238, we get a concentration, 0.2221, with four digits in it. So 0 0.2221 molarity. Now why don't you pause the video and see if you can fill out trials 2 and trial 3 in the same way. Alright, as you can see I've filled out trial 2, trial 3, and I took my three final results, the three concentrations of NaOH, and I calculated the average. So for this person the average, the sum of those three concentrations divided by three, is 0 0.2271. Now how do we find the percent difference? What I want to do to get a percent difference is look at those three results and my average, and I want to see which one of those three was furthest from the average. So 2271, 2221, those two have a difference of about 50. 2302 and 2271, the difference there is about 31. Now you could actually subtract them on your calculator if you want to uh, see, the, see the differences in a decimal form. And then the last one, 2271, there's about a difference of 20 there. So it looks to me like that first trial with a difference of about 50, this trial is going to be the furthest trial from the average. So what I'm going to do is take the furthest trial from the average minus the average. So I'll do that on the side here, 0.2221 minus the average, 0.2271. And then I'm going to divide that by the average, 0.2271, and times by 100. Now, I'm, I'm going to get a negative answer here because my first number is smaller than my second number, but I'll just take the absolute value. I'll make it positive. So 0 0.2221 minus 0 0.2271 equals, so the largest difference was 0 0.005. Now I'm going to divide that by the average, 0 0.2271, and times by 100. So this person has 2.2% difference. Okay, so 2.2% difference. Now, when this lab was done, they needed to have less than 3%, and therefore this person looks good. In our lab, I wanted you to have less than 2%, so some of you might have chosen to do a fourth trial after that. So there's some sample calculations for standardizing sodium hydroxide. Now our average concentration was 0.2271. So let's take a look at the experiment. We're going to take that base that we just standardized and we're going to use it to analyze some vinegar. We want to know what's the concentration in the vinegar sample. So now I'm going to have to give you a little bit of extra information, but Notice in the results section it wants to know the concentration of the NaOH. Well, we just found that the concentration was 0.2271 molarity. That's our average concentration from the last experiment. So we'll just use that right across the board as the concentration here. Now how do I find the volume of the NaOH used? So this person, it looks like looking up at their data, they measured 10 mils of vinegar, and they probably put that in their flask, and then they added some phenolphthalein indicator, they titrated with the sodium hydroxide in their burette, and they noted the initial and final levels. So can you use that to find the volume of NaOH used and the concentration in the diluted vinegar? 
the vinegar that they were titrating, it doesn't say it explicitly in the data, but it was a diluted vinegar sample. So pure vinegar was diluted. And I'll tell you right here, it was diluted in a one, oops, switched pens there, one part vinegar with three parts water. Keep that in mind at the end. So see if you can find the volume of base used and the concentration of the acetic acid in the diluted sample. All right, the, the volume used should be easy. We have 11.8 mils as our final level, minus the initial level, 0.38 mils. So this person used 11.42 milliliters of, of base. 11.42 milliliters. Now, I know that the concentration was 0.2271 moles per liter. I also know that the vinegar is monoprotic, has one hydrogen in the formula for acetic acid, so that means we're going to react again in a one-to-one -one ratio. Let me find the concentration here using unit multipliers rather than formulas, since we used formulas earlier. I'll take the volume of base, the 11.42 mils of base, of NaOH, and the first multiplier that I'll use, we will, we will get rid of the mils of base and switch to liters of base. And now we can use the concentration of the base to convert from liters to moles of NaOH. then using the ratio, moles of NaOH can be converted to moles of acetic acid, and I'll just say moles of HA, just to save some space. The moles of HA, to get a, to get a molarity, we want to divide that by volume. Now the volume ideally should be liters, but here the volume was milliliters, so I'll first simply divide by milliliters and then convert the milliliters to liters. So let's examine what I'm doing here. In the first multiplier, one liter has a thousand milliliters, so we're just converting milliliters of base to liters. The next multiplier, moles and liters, that's a concentration, and we saw that it was 0.2271 molarity, so 0.22 seven one moles per liter. The next multiplier is from the balanced equation. It's a monoprotic acid, so it reacts in a one-to-one -one ratio with our base. In the equation, if we had written out the balanced equation, these two numbers are just the coefficients from the balanced equation. The volume, now that we have moles of acid, we want to divide by volume. Remembering C equals N over V, we're dividing by volume. And it said that we used 10 milliliters of the vinegar, so 10.00 milliliters was the volume. But we want moles per liter, not moles per milliliter, so we'll convert the milliliters, there's a thousand milliliters, in one liter. And when we cancel out all of the units, mils of NaOH cancels, liters of NaOH cancels, moles of NaOH cancels, and milliliters of the acid cancels. What's left at the end is moles of the acid per liter, which is what we're trying to find. Now, if you wanted to use formulas instead of unit multipliers, then in the first formula, we're using N equals C times V. We knew the concentration of the base, we know the volume of the base, so N equals C times V would find the moles of base. Just remember that your volume has to be in liters. So 0.2271, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm doing a unit multipliers, 11.42 divided by 1,000, I've just converted to liters, and times by 0.2271, I've now got the moles. 
second step, if you were using formulas, would be to use the ratio from the balanced equation and convert the moles of, of NaOH to moles of acid. So this would be a one-to-one -one ratio. They're the same number. Then, using C equals N over V, take your moles of acid and divide by the volume of acid to get the concentration of acid. So with me, I'm going to divide by the 10 mils, and then I'm going to multiply by 1,000. And my final answer is 0.2593 is my concentration of the vinegar. Right? Now, how do I get the undiluted vinegar's concentration? Well, the original vinegar was one part vinegar mixed with three parts water. In other words, one part vinegar in four parts of solution. So it was one fourth of its, of its original concentration. So to get the undiluted concentration, we simply multiply the diluted concentration by four. So one part vinegar with three parts water means one part vinegar in four parts total. So maybe one mil was mixed with three mils of water, or ten mils was mixed with thirty mils of water, or a hundred mils was mixed with three hundred mils of water. It doesn't really matter. The ratio is, in the end, one part of the vinegar with four parts of solution. So to get the undiluted vinegar, we're going to reverse that and multiply by 4. So 0 0.2593 times 4, 1.037 moles per liter. Now you would repeat that calculation three times, find an average, and then do your percent difference the same way we did earlier. All right, I've, I've done the calculations for trial two and three, and it looks like trial three, the person must have screwed up a little bit. Their concentration is larger significantly than the other two trials. Sure enough, when I did the average, I then found the difference between trial three and the average because that's the largest difference. I divided by the average times by 100, this person has 4.7% difference, so they didn't do a great job in terms of precision. They would probably want to do a fourth trial and then ignore trial three. In any case, so there is a uh, second part of a lab on titrations where we took the known concentration of the, of the sodium hydroxide after standardizing it, and we used it to now analyze a vinegar solution. This question was a little bit more complicated because the vinegar had been diluted um, and it was diluted with a 1 to 3 ratio and that meant we had to multiply by 4 to get the undiluted concentration. On a test I probably wouldn't do that to you. You would simply need to be able to find the diluted concentration the way we did here. So anyways, I hope that helps analyzing a de sample data table as potential test question or exam question for acid-base titrations.